Okay, this I'm going to do some thoughts and draw some conclusions and give people advice on the German uh, 1888 Commission rifle. It's a very interesting gun. Uh, it was the first smokeless powder rifle adopted by the German Army. It's seen a lot of modifications and a lot of, uh, you know, it was new technology, everything was new. A lot of changes early in the development, then changes in the ammunition, modified, and it saw use globally. These guns were exported and used all over the world, and used up until 1950. They actually found some Chinese troops carrying these old 88s that the Chinese bought back 50 years before from the Germans uh, in the Korean War. So it's seen frontline service till 1950, which is pretty, you know, pretty remarkable. Had a lot of innovations. Had the barrel jacket, which you got an automatic free floating barrel, which leads to accuracy. Now, my advice and conclusions on safety and firing. I've Come to the conclusion, the S stamp on the receiver. Now, I've seen it, I went online and I've seen a couple places um, advertising these guns for sale and say it has S stamp on the receiver. So it has the 323 diameter groove uh, barrel, safe to fire modern ammunition. That is not true. Okay? The S modification. They run a chamber reamer down, opened up the chamber's throat and add just a few thousandths more to accept the cartridge with the larger diameter. I found variations in the grooves of these guns, unless they were like this one here, and my conclusions are based on this gun is matching, and this is a weird gun. The receiver, jacket, bolt, all the parts, trigger guard, and even the stock the serial numbers match. The trigger guard two screws, the barrel bands and the other screw don't match. Now how, how that ended up that way, I don't know. Somebody took it apart and lost the screws and the barrel bands, I have no idea. But other than that, the major components, the bolt, barrel, receiver, and even under the jacket, the barrel serial number, all match. A lot of my conclusions were drawn from this gun. It is original. It hasn't been tampered with or modified by the Turks. And it is a German, you know, it's all German made and modified. All the little uh, markings on the receiver uh, match up to what it is. I have several other types where the marks on the receiver do not match. I have a gun stamped with an S. It has a 318 groove diameter, one of the very early barrels. It has that strange uh, buildup. Uh, and another thing, if you really want to or into this, this book, and it's on there, the German Gewehr 88 Commission Rifle Collector's Guide by Paul Scarletta. You can get this book on Amazon.com. It's about $25, $30. If you're really into these guns and want a lot of information, a lot of photographs, get a better understanding, this is a pretty good book. I had to read it three times. The way the guy wrote it, it, it clogged your mind up with stuff, but it, it is a very good guide and worth, worth uh, 30 bucks, okay, for the information in there. <clears throat> I found that a lot of these guns have different barrels and the markings don't match up. Now, a lot of these guns have Turkish markings, been around, been on the surplus market. A few of these guns, I believe, have been built from parts recently by people and trying to sell them as collector's items, okay, or as military surplus. So you have to beware, and there's no way to tell until you totally disassemble the gun, examine it. Then you're going to have to go, and it is a must to slug the barrel. Because I have found different groove variations, like I said, the one from uh, the 318 groove. If you read the book, the early problems they had, these guns did explode, was the early bullets left a strange buildup 
or fouling, metal fouling, the metal stuck to the inside of the barrel. That barrel is tapered two thousandths towards the last three inches, and that's what the problem they had. He describes that, that there was unusual wear and buildup towards the muzzle end of the barrel. And when you fire them old bullets, each time you fired it, it increased the pressure until the gun burst. So that gun, I'm going to have to look at it and look at that barrel some more, but I will definitely say that one is not safe to fire any kind of ammo in. I don't think I'd even try firing uh, cast bullets. It has a buildup of two or three thousandths and a taper to it, the last three inches of the barrel. Now, there is a company, uh, Gun Parts Corporation, is selling a whole bunch of barrels for these guns, and there's another uh, company selling carbine barrels, just the barrel itself, they're pull-offs. And I did some investigation, and they, well, we can't guarantee what it is, or some of them say they have an S stamped on it, but it's the early style with the, uh, not the reinforced, with the smooth taper. It's the one that has the very sharp taper, which is the early barrel. Um, I do have a rifle marked S with a barrel like that on there, with a two, or a 323 or 324 groove diameter. You know, go figure. I, I don't know. There are variances. You should check it. You know, if you don't have the skill to slug or, or check the barrel or headspace it, um, either take it to a gunsmith, play it safe, shoot commercial ammo in it if the bore looks clean, uh, or shoot cast bullets with a very light load to be on the safe side. If you do have a good gun with a good barrel and a 323, 324 groove diameter, I really don't see a problem firing just about any of the surplus ammo I have in some of these that have the larger groove diameter, but I measured and knew they had the large groove diameter. And now I see the misconception uh, when I did some more research into the ammo, people are saying that the uh, Romanian ammo is loaded to World War I standards because it's kicking out a 150 grain bullet at 2,800 feet per second, which that is listed in there for the 1905 S ammo. So that brings up the question, okay, do people recommend you don't fire surplus ammo in because of the variances and that, you know, if the gun checks out and if the gun's good, I, I haven't run into any problems with pressure or anything or the gun's failing. I, I don't know if anybody's had one fail, but then again, like I said, the one with the strange barrel with the real tight bore and that taper, it will fail, even with commercially loaded ammo. It's, it's not a good thing. So. They're a great gun, they're fun to shoot, they're accurate. Sights are all over, sights are different, sights are all over the place. They'll shoot high, some will shoot right on at 100 yards. I found the ones with the uh, Turkish style numbering on it. It'd be uh, 8805. Uh, I have one of those. They seem to shoot right on at 100 yards. Um, the other ones without the little flip up thing, the newer sights, they shoot high. I don't know if they're set for 300 yards or something. But when you use uh, some of my loads, especially that uh, 198 grain that's going at 1800 feet per second, it has a tendency to shoot low. So you could probably reload something that'll, if you reload a bullet that's 400 feet per second, 500 feet per second slower to stay under the pressure limit. Uh, it may come out to where the sights that shoot high will be pretty close on. So there's a lot more work into it. I haven't covered the foreign variants. I have one, Turkish one, but I'll do that at a later date. I just wanted to do the German modifications. And those are my conclusions. Any questions, please send me an email and ask. I'll try to help you out as best I can. Okay.